Hello, sweet children of love. Welcome to this session. This is about cartomancy and tarot. And what is exactly tarot? Well, obviously, tarot is a form of cartomancy. Cartomancy in itself literally means, literally refers to cards. You have it in the name, cartomancy. It's an art of reading the cards, divination. As you may or may not know, divination has many forms, it's not just cartomancy. Some people do confuse divination with cartomancy, but it is far more than that. You can divine in runes, in stones, in bones, in anything. You can... oh, coffee reading, you know, in the coffee cup after you've drank. Or even in, in anything, in sand, in just anything. I used to divine in cocoa beans shells <laughs> or peanut shells or just any shells that I have around the house and I would divine in them. I, this is the thing, you can divine using anything. The thing is that it's you, actually. It's the one who divines that the message comes through. And some people have a more of a propensity towards divining with cards. Some, as I said, would have more of a propensity to divine with runes or with shells or with stones, with whatever. Or with symbols, with charms, just anything. Colors as well. As I said, it's just, it can be anything. Now, Tayro. Hold on a sec. Okay. I changed the position of the camera a little bit. Tayro in itself is a specific form of cartomancy. And there are many theories about Tayro. Some say that it is ancient. Some say that, well, those theories are not true. Some, um, this second category of people who say that Tayro is not that ancient are kind of, um, you know, kind of like those people who want to debunk the conspiracy theories. You know what I mean? Tayro in itself is, is ancient. Obviously, it is, its ancient form is not as the present one. Because uh, look at astrology as well. Astrology is ancient. <laughs> it's more than ancient. <laughs> but the way the ancients perceived astrology is very much different from the nowadays astrology. Each art, each spiritual art evolves with the evolution of the human consciousness. Hopefully evolution, because considering the way most people are nowadays, it doesn't look like an evolution, but I'm talking about the ones who really evolve. Okay. <laughs> and there were people who said that there was an Egyptian form of Tarot. Had they named it Tarot or not, like literally this very word, Tero, we do not know. But I can tell you for sure that there was cartomancy. If we're talking about strictly Tero, if there was a Tero, it wasn't like the nowadays one, as I said, that's for sure. The nowadays Tero is very much based on Kabbalah. And what is Kabbalah? Kabbalah is a Jewish 
type of mysticism. How old is Kabbalah is debatable. It's another debatable topic. And truth is, with most of the spiritual beliefs, the mystic sects, to call them so, hermeticism or just any type of spiritual branch, it's very hard to say how old that is and to truly pinpoint a specific moment in human history as a starting point for that. It's, it's enough to say they are old. And this is about human history as well. Human history is far longer than what you've been taught in history books. Those myths of the old age, they are for real. And Kabbalah is, has a central theme, should I say to it, called the Tree of Life. And I spoke in an earlier session of Tarot teachings about the Tree of Life. It is found in the playlist about Tarot on my channel on YouTube. You can find it there. It, it might be the the video prior to this. So, this tree of life is a geometric structure. Note, it is not to be confused with the Norse tree of life. We're talking about Hebrew mysticism here. The Norse tree of life is literally depicted as a tree, as you can see here. The Kabbalistic tree of life is just a geometric structure with nodes, like depicted like circles. And there are 10 circles and they are connected to one another. As I said, if you want to learn more about this tree of life, watch that video. The purpose of the tree of life is to depict how the world, the manifested world, got to be created from the most pure essence of the divine, which is the up upmost point in the tree of life. And the manifested world of this planet, which is called kingdom in that tree of life, is the lowermost point in that tree of life. So between them, there are some nodes and some tra trajectories of energy. That's how the Hebrew mystics perceived the flow of energy from the mind of the divine until it reaches the manifested world that humans see in the human incarnation. And from that specific geometric structure called the tree of life, Later on, people created a cartomancy deck related to each node in that tree of life. And this became Tarot. <laughs> each card in Tarot is associated either with a node in that tree of life, either with a line of energy flow from a node to another. And a section of Tarot, which is called the Minor Arcana, is associated with the nodes. And another section of Tarot, which is called the Major Arcana, is associated with the trajectories of energy flow between the nodes. So each card of Tarot has a Kabbalistic interpretation referring to either, if we're talking about the Major Arcana, a type of energy flow from a type of consciousness to another. And if we're talking about the Minor Arcana, each card represents a type of consciousness 
related to one of the four elements because the minor arcana has four suits, each one related to one of the four elements, fire, earth, air, water. This is not the... This is not the order used in Seiro, this is the astrological order of the elements. The, the order used in Seiro is from the least dense to the most dense element. The least dense element of Seiro is fire, not air. Some would say it's air, but the ones who created Seiro perceived fire as the least dense element. And somehow, it, you may understand it because fire purifies. Everything that is burned is, is just burned. It, it's purified entirely. It vanishes. It's turned into ash. It's... If anything goes through a type of metamorphosis conveyed by the other elements, it's not as fast and not as boom as the metamorphosis brought by fire. So... Fire is the element put closest to the divine. And in Seiro, it is associated with a symbol, which is the symbol of wands. So the suit of wands in Seiro pertains to the fire element. And fire in itself is a masculine element. You will see this in Seiro, these four elements, two are feminine, two are masculine. Fire is masculine. After fire, we have got water, a feminine. It's the realm of emotions. Then, after water, we've got air, another masculine, which is the realm of the mind. So, by now, I suppose it makes sense why air is actually the third element in Teiro. Because it's not necessarily... This perception of which is the least dense and the most dense element in Teiro doesn't really have to do that much with the elements in themselves as it has to do with the realm of those elements, the consciousness realm of those elements. And fire is the consciousness of the divine, the cosmic consciousness. Water is the, the realm of emotions. Then air is the realm of the mind, which is more like the, the individual mind. And then we've got earth, this, even in Seiro, even out of Seiro, everywhere, this will be the densest element anyways. And in Seiro, this is the, the realm of senses. <laughs> it is even depicted by pentacles, you know, as coins. They are depicted as coins called pentacles. The water element is depicted as cups, because you can pour in them. And the air element is depicted as swords, because like, imagine a sword like... It, it moves like air. And just as much as thoughts, it can cut. These are the nuances of Tseiro on a more general approach. As I said, each card has its own meaning. It's, Tseiro is a type of cartomancy that really requires study in order to get to its real depth. I was talking to a friend of mine lately and she was <laughs> talking to me about the fact that she saw many, many girls lately who read Seiro who appear just like poof 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 just like that but they are not really Seiro readers they are just surfers surface readers of the cards this is the thing with Seiro as I said Seiro has a history a meaning it really comes from a mystic sect of people 
It deals with Kabbalah. And now remember, it is Kabbalah. Remember about the dark Kabbalah. The dark Kabbalah is that part of people who rule the world. They are dark magicians and they come from ancient times. And they know about this. They know about... They, this is how they got to rule the world. Through mysticism, through mystical arts. <sighs> this doesn't mean that Kabbalah in itself is something bad. It's just the fact that there is a dark Kabbalah. A dark sect of people who follow a Kabbalistic approach to understanding life in the many forms of life. Beside this Kabbalistic perception of the tree of life and the asso association with it, Zayra also has astrological associations, seasonal associations, and it brings forth archetypes. The major arcana is in itself a, a very vast portrait of many, many archetypes. And another association of the, of the major arcana is with the Hebrew alphabet. As I said in the major arcana, the cards are associated with the trajectory of energy flow in the tree of life. But beside this, they are also associated with a letter in the Hebrew alphabet. There are 22 cards in the major arcana and there are 22 cards in blah, 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet. And each letter of the Hebrew alphabet had a spiritual meaning. For example, Aleph, you might have heard about this. Aleph or Aleph, or depends how you read it. A-L-E-P-H. Aleph. The first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, which actually... The thing is that the Hebrew alphabet was later turned into Phoenician, and from Phoenician it was turned into the Greek alphabet. The Greek alphabet was borrowed by the Latins, and then the Latin alphabet is the, the alphabet of the most languages nowadays in the West. And this is where it comes from. So literally, Aleph is the, the ancestor of A, the first letter. And the way Aleph was written was entirely different. It, the, the Hebrew alphabet is not like the Latin with A like that. It's, uh, it's different. And again, it is something to study. Just to give you an insight, Aleph was... Aleph is probably the most symbolistic of the letters. I was intending to talk about it, to give you an example about it, but it has a vast meaning. So coming back to what I was saying, Tarot is a realm of study, actually. Because everything, everything in it is hyper-symbolistic. Even when you look at the cards, especially the um, Rider Waite Smith Tarot, you will find a lot of meanings and each time you look at the cards, you will find another meaning if you look with this symbolistical approach. For example, if you look at the full card, you will see a feather on, on the wreath he, he wears, the, the character wears. But something that very few people notice is that on the little bag he carries, there is also a bird depicted. So, <laughs> it's... Um, as I said, th there are many meanings, many, many meanings. And again, that feather, for example, appears in other cards. It's the very same feather. 
and very few people notice it. There are many subtleties. So, it is something of dedication. Yes, obviously, you can read tarot intuitively. This is actually the basis of divination. You, you cannot be someone who divines without that. That is the basis of divination. When I started tarot, I, I did not know all that I know today about tarot, but I was reading intuitively. And many times I, like, I was getting it. But after understanding the, the nuances of tarot, I was... <sighs> the thing is that I am more drawn to teachings anyways. Depends on my mood. <laughs> so, essentially, Tsero is a very packed up type of cartomancy deck. You yourself can have your own cartomancy deck, as you can see with this example. It's all about the symbolism you put into it, the, let's say, associations. What is it that? you see in that card and what is the connection between all those cards oracle cards for example many oracle decks they have meaning a lot of meaning but the difference between oracle decks at least from the oracle decks that i see today and the difference between them and zero is that zero is a tarot has a story from one card to another. Most oracle decks don't have that. Most oracle decks, yes, they may be on a topic, let's say about a divinity or chakras or I don't know, you name it. But they don't have a, a story in it. Tero has that. Tero has a certain evolution from the Fool, for example, which is the first card of the Major Arcana, to the World, which is the last card of the Major Arcana. There is an evolution. Each card represents a step in the Fool's evolution because the Major Arcana represents the Fool's journey through life. And when the Fool reaches the last step which is the the world well the name says it is the world it's done is the last card and then this is a cycle which ended lessons have been learned things are renewed and another cycle may start with the full again which is the zero card <sighs> so and this applies to the minor arcana as well there is an evolution from the ace to the king. The minor arcana is really like any cards, playing cards deck with diamonds, hearts, spades, and there's another one which I, which I forgot. But diamonds are associated with pentacles, the earth element. Spades, well, swords. <laughs> Hearts with cups, because emotions. And the other one with ones, fire. And you can even use a playing cards deck to divide. It's, as I said, all about what you see in it. And in fact, for many years, Tarot passed as a playing card deck, playing cards deck. Because, you know, there were many, like in, in human history, there were many times of prosecution of the ones who practice evolved forms of spirituality because the elites, the politicians, the dark cabal, and um, different secret orders which ruled the states wanted the populace to be dumb 
So they were prosecuting people who might illuminate other people. And for this reason, for many years, tarot passed as a playing card stick. <laughs> and the term tarot actually comes from, it is said, it, it is not for, for sure, but it is said that it comes from the Italian term tarocchi. Personally, I find it, it, it sounds very nice. <laughs> it sounds very, very nice to me. And um, this talks a lot about humans. So this is a um, brief or less brief history of Tehro. Thing is that there are many debates about the history of Tehro. Some say that, as I, as I said in the beginning, some say that it is more modern, some say that it is ancient, some say blah, blah, blah. Who cares? <laughs> Essentially, who cares? I gave you the example with astrology. Obviously, the history of Tsairo was not as properly kept as the history of astrology because of prosecution. <laughs> but all we know today about Tsairo is enough. <laughs> Coming back to what I was saying, you yourself can have your own cartomancy deck feel free, feel inspired to create one, feel free to use it, to sell it as well. And please do tell me how the session about the history of Tarot was like. <laughs>